Good evening. Thank you everybody for joining us today. So today uh, you have joined us for the Celebrating 50 Years of Excellence UWSP's College of Natural Resources Spring Seminar Series. So today we are featuring Suzanne Balefuss, an industrial forester, and she will be talking about her journey through UWSP and into her career. But before we get into Suzanne's talk, I would like to take a moment to go through a couple of acknowledgements. So first of all, um, my name is Jennifer Summers. I'm with Program Development Specialist with the Wisconsin Center for Wildlife, and myself and Stacey Allen Bonnick with the uh, College of Natural Resources have coordinated this seminar series with the help of a number of other people. And so I'd like to first of all, thank Stacy so much for her assistance with putting together this seminar series and with contacting speakers and with reaching out to our alumni office to find some folks to talk for us today. And I'd also like to uh, give a special thank you to the CNR faculty discipline and department coordinators. Um, each of the people that are listed here uh, helped us identify speakers to come to the seminar series and to speak for us. And they have been an integral part in making this seminar series happen. So I'd like to thank those people um, for their time and for their efforts. Next, UWSP has an agreement with our tribe with our uh, with the tribes of this area. And anytime we have a public gathering and including virtual gatherings, we like to make this acknowledgement. Uh, we recognize the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point occupies lands of the Ho Chunk and Menominee people. Please take a moment to acknowledge and honor the ancestral Ho Chunk and Menominee land and the sacred land of all Indigenous peoples. So finally, uh, this is the uh, next to last seminar in this seminar series, which is all about celebrating the, the 50th anniversary of the College of Natural Resources. Um, Suzanne is, a, a, is an alumni and she will be talking with us today. And the final seminar in this series is going to be Friday, April 9th at 5 p.m. And it's going to be featuring our very own Dean, uh, Brian Sloss. And he is going to be talking about the College of Natural Resources and where we've, where we've been and where we're going. And that should be a very interesting talk. And all of our talks eventually will be available on our website for to view the recordings if you like. And so our website is www.uwsp.edu slash WCW. And now I'd like to turn it over to Scott Hingstrom, director of the Wisconsin Center for Wildlife to talk for a few minutes about the history of the College of Natural Resources. Thank you, Jennifer. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to welcome all of you here to this CNR Spring Semester Series or Seminar Series, and uh, and the celebration of this 50th anniversary of the College of Natural Resources here at UW Stevens Point. You, we all know that CNR um, is one of the largest and and best institutions in the world relative to natural resources, um, but it's kind of interesting to reflect back on our history, where we've come from. Um, in 1937, Charles Watson taught the first course on conservation at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. And uh, in 1946, Fred Schmeekley, now that's a name many of you will recognize uh, from the Schmeekley Reserve, very near campus, um, he developed or, or modified it into a, a department of conservation education at UW Stevens Point, which eventually became the Department of Natural Resources in 1968, which ultimately became the College of Natural Resources in 1971, when Daniel O. Trainer was hired as the new dean of, of that college. And here we are, 50 years later, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the College of Natural Resources at UWSP. We have an outstanding slate of uh, presenters from all walks and disciplines of the College of Natural Resources, and I really do hope that you have and will enjoy them. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to Paul Deruska, who will be introducing our speaker today. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Paul Deruska. I'm the Discipline Coordinator for Forestry, and it is, tonight it is my absolute honor to introduce our guest speaker. Suzanne Bialfus graduated from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point in the fall of 1988 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Forestry, specializing in forest administration and business. Shortly after graduation, she accepted a position at Menominee Tribal Enterprises on the Menominee Indian Reservation as a field forester, where she practiced civil culture for nearly 15 years. That, that sounds so cool, by the way. Halfway through her career, she set forestry aside to raise her two children, and after a brief hiatus, re-entered the field in 2015. Currently, Suzanne works as a field forester for Central Wisconsin Lumber, promoting sustainable forest management while working with private landowners to provide forest products to the forest products industry. Suzanne's talk is entitled, UWSP, A Stepping Stone Towards a Career. Suzanne, the floor is yours. Yeah, well, uh, thanks everyone. Appreciate the um, 
evening. I'm kind of new at this, so I might be a little jittery. Um, <laughs> um, so I started um, off my career. Um, here we go to the next slide quick. Everything started basically back um, when I was in high school and even before high school, I took a lot of stuff in egg and conservation, um, which got me involved um, with uh, wanting to go to uh, Natural Resources College. So I looked it up a um, couple different colleges and I applied for UW Stevens Point in the spring of 1981 and was accepted in uh, November of 81. Um, through that time while I was in high school, I purchased my first forestry vocational manual um, from my egg instructor. Suzanne, I apologize. I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, we can't see your screen. Oh, what happened? Oh, hang on. So the, the whole thing's gone? Yep, we can't, we, we can't see it. So you have to go to the share screen at the bottom. Um, somehow it's not there. Uh -oh. And we were all set. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry. There. Can you, no. Can you see it now? Yep. Thank you. Sorry about that. I, I don't know what happened, to be honest with you. Um, so I like I was saying, I applied UW Stevens Point in the spring of 81 and was accepted in the fall of 81. Um, I picked up my application while I ran an in invitational track meet when I was in high school. Upon um, coming into Stevens Point, I decided to go to school for forestry and I minored in wildlife. Oh, wait a minute. That says business admin. I dropped wildlife and uh, I was a active uh, student in, for SAF. I also did uh, sign up for uh, teaching uh, assistant um, on the College of Natural Resources uh, CNR floor. I uh, worked with Dr. Rogers, uh, Dr. Miller, and Dr. Houghton. Um, we do the summer camp. Uh, I uh, applied for the teaching assistance at Tree Haven. So I participated at Tree Haven for mine, and then I helped assist with the teachers um, the second semester of Tree Haven. And then I was lucky enough in the future um, after graduation to uh, participate in the College of Natural Resources accreditation. So I was a part of that team and that, that was very nice to do that. It was... So the biggest thing that um, I actually compared um, back when I was, was uh, started point um, forestry administration was part of the curriculum. Today it is not, it's forest management. Um, some things that I noticed is the 100 classes that I took are now combined into 200 level classes. Um, they uh, put forestry, fisheries, wildlife together, and then they put soils and water resources together. The other changes that I noticed is uh, dendrology wasn't a separate class anymore. It was dendrology and silvics. Um, current, uh, back when I was in school, the classes were based on what, what was needed in the industry. What were the workforce? What were they looking for? So a lot of our classes represented that time frame uh, for technology and regions. And what I really liked about Point was the academics targeted current job, they targeted those current job markets and job requirements. So when, when we got out, we knew what we were, we were prepared for. So with the basic understanding that I had from Point, I went out, I applied for a job my senior year, 
uh, my last semester at Stevens Point, and I was lucky enough to get into Menominee Tribal Enterprises. In I started um, my um, 1989. It says 1988, but that was the beginning of my opportunity. Um, so advance um, the advancement in tools that we we learned to use at Point. Um, that helped with the work that Menominee Tribal Enterprises required for us to do. So tools of the trade, we did um, continuous forest inventory. I don't know how many people have heard of that before, uh, CFI. Menominee Tribal Enterprises does Every 10 years, they do a continuous forest inventory. So that's what got me into working there. We used everything that we used at point. You know, the we were measuring 100% measurements, four inches and larger. We had fixed radius plots. We used our clinometers, our height poles, calipers, duckbill calipers. It was compass and pace. Um, we also used uh, iron, uh, steel chains. So like when we had hilly situations, we had to paste chain and compass to where our plots were. We used uh, reliscopes for measuring the heights for saw, for pulp. Um, we, we increment board. We, we did everything that we were you know, prepared for and, and then some. Um, before we even got to go out in the field, Economic Travel Enterprises had us participate in it was a two week course on how they wanted their, the trees measured. So yeah, we were in groups of two. Um, I was one female out of, out of 13 guys. Um, the only other females that were um, present were the secretarial staff. And then um, all, all this was possible through grants for the continuous forest inventory. Stand exam uh, followed with a new grant. Uh, we went out to different areas and remapped the entire 10 townships on Menominee Tribal Enterprises that, that they manage their woods. So we were grouping like species through silviculture, creating management units for um, logging for the future. Um, our scales were four inches to the mile for our aerial photos. Everything was done on an aerial photo. We had uh, topo maps that we used or, re or referred to. We did ground truthing. And we remapped all the units out with the forestry. Two changes that, two things that I did at Menominee that I did not learn at UW Stevens Point was using a mapping wheel. And I don't know if anybody is familiar with a mapping wheel, but that is an obsolete tool unless you get into a situation like I did recently where I was under towers and I couldn't get any cell reception on my GPS. So I brought out the old standby and I basically mapped his woods roads using my mapping wheel. So you're doing a compass and a pace and you're drawing out your lengths with a 10th of an inch ruler and a grid system underneath that um, LIDAR paper that we had. Um, the other thing that uh, was different is we now had to learn COTAR's habitat classification. So that brought in a whole new perspective because we were learning soils, but we weren't really learn we didn't really learn habitat classification. And then from all the data that we did, we collected, we did the timber marking, we did sale establishment, I put roads in. In uh, so it was a it was it was a progressive learning experience from what I had learned through Point. And it was well received from us foresters that 
they put effort into us by teaching and training the additional things that they needed for us to know. Um, later on, through being a forest technician, I also, um, we went back out on the plots. Um, when we were logging, when the loggers were out there logging, there'd be a continuous forest inventory plot that they had to cut through. Then um, another person and I would go out there. We would measure what the products were made from those plots. So it wasn't just go out and tell me what's here. We looked at utilization standards, what products were created from felling that tree and how sound it was, what the rot, how much top wood was wasted. Next, um, in my uh, career at Manami Tribal Enterprises, I, I applied for the job of forest development. I was a supervisor and then later on, I uh, was added as a timber sales administrator. Um, I had my own logging crews that I oversaw and it started out as cross training. And then it ended up being that they needed extra bodies to, to help. But my primary, my primary job was regeneration of the forest. So I did natural and artificial um, regenerating of the trees. We looked at habitat type, we looked at soils, and we, we selected the best seedlings or the best trees to bring back for the site so we could accomplish our goals as quality and quantity. To do that, we implemented site prep. We did chemical, fire, and mechanical. Um, we only used Roundup, anything that, um, we couldn't use any chemical that had a longer half-life. Uh, fire, we did mostly in oak areas. Had some excellent re results from doing fire um, site prep. We did a brown and burn, basically. Um, the following year, I had oak sprouts that were as tall as me, four to five feet tall. And then the mechanical site prep that included two different types of mechanisms. We did anchor chain dragging. And we, uh, half the day, the guys would drag the anchor chains one direction, and then the other half of the day, they drag them the perpendicular to the direction that they had initially dragged. Between those uh, site prep, I was able to help Menominee establish um, the minimum stocking requirements in conifer on uh, 900 trees per acre, minimum stocking requirements of hardwoods at 450 trees per acre in the um, planting areas, which we did with two different types of equipment a dinar and disc trencher and a bracky scarifier. The mechanical part in the shelter woods were the anchor chain drags that we did back and forth through underneath the, we did a hemlock, we did white pine, oak, and um, our numbers were at the minimum of 10,000 germinants per acre. Um, recently I drove through Menominee and discovered that, hey, look at all those trees I grew. <laughs> so that was really nice to see that and to see what my, you know, what I did back 20 years ago to what it is now today. The other thing um, I was in, I oversaw was timber stain improvement. So I had plantations that, you know, I had to monitor. I did first, third and fifth year regeneration surveys made sure that my survival stocking was up there. And then um, I hired crews that went in and did, uh, one, one crew had machetes, another crew had brush saws, and they were to release uh, competing stems off what we planted or what came back naturally that fit the quality and the quantity for the type of habitat type in the soils that we were growing the seedlings and trees on. Part of my duties also was uh, harvest preparation and then the sale administration. So harvest preparation, getting the sales ready, marking them, putting the boundaries in, doing the, doing the surveys, getting the, the numbers ready. So the, 
loggers could bid on them. And then the follow up, making sure that they're cutting things that they're supposed to be cutting and not taking what they're not supposed to be taking. So over my career with Venami Travel Enterprises, I've done a numerous um, presentations. Um, I'm very nervous today. So if you haven't figured that out, um, one of the first ones I did was harvesting solutions at Menomi, um, and it was a symposium that Menami Tribal Enterprise hosted. My, uh, my presentation dealt with going from the older style equipment, having the cable skitters, having um, small uh, forwarders, um, and hand cutting. We did, um, we did a variety of different machines that were coming on board, uh, Rotneys, Ponzi's, those are the two that I remember. The Rotney was on my job site. Um, so we showed what the Rotney could do. I was in a large saw timber white pine stand and I also had a stand of white pine pole timber, which was on a hill. So the presentation was, is, um, showing what the machine could do, how much faster it was compared to hand cutting, bucking everything up in individual pieces or cable skidding stuff out to a landing and how you bring in the pre-hauler behind it and how your decks along the roads are much nicer looking, less mud and um, pushing up of soil along those woods roads. Um, the machine that, showcased as the Rotney could cut a larger diameter. And that was one of the things um, that we were experimenting with because when we were pruning trees with a machine, out of, it was called a tree witch out of Germany, we wanted to, we could prune the trees as long as they were eight inches and up to 12 inches. But once they got bigger than that, we had to try to create a new head. And I had left prior to the new head being created on that. The next one I did was uh, Manami Travel Enterprises uh, forestry regeneration efforts. That was out of the, for the nursery conference down in Spring Green. And I presented on artificial and natural regeneration seed collection. We collected seed from oaks, white pine, um, hemlock. Those are the three that we did. Um, all our seeds were taken to the state nursery. They extracted the seed for us and then we bought the seedlings back. So we were paid for our seeds. Um, we had, uh, we, were, we were looking for there is for our genetics. Uh, the artificial, and natural site prep dealt with uh, RC and D was recreation, conservation, and development. That presentation was at the uh, solution, practical solutions, and we focused on site prep and conversion areas for artificial plantings and for natural regeneration. Uh, we discussed about the best tools to use to get the the quality and quantity of the uh, seedlings that needed to be um, either naturally or planted in each site. We um, did monitor those as well. Um, plant use and habitat type. Uh, coworker and I were asked to guest speak at the College of Menominee Nations. We talked about what different plants are in different habitat types based on the trees that they that grow there. Um, for instance, uh, just last summer, I got stung by a bee. I found jewelweed, I scrunched it up in my hand, I put it on the sting, and a half an hour later, I was back to normal. It, you know, a little bit of pain, no big deal, but knowing natural um, plant remedies, and that's what that, presentation was targeted. And it was just kind of ironic last summer that I actually remembered something that we presented there. I've done numerous poster boards at the Shano County Fair, uh, Intertribal Council, 
New Richmond Earth Day brunch on the farm for Shano and actually was uh, asked to come back to brunch on the farm for my poster board, but with COVID that kind of got um, axed. So when I took a brief break in my lifetime to raise my two children, I discovered that University, uh, St. Mary's University of Minnesota had an opportunity to learn geographic information science. I did not want the master's, I just wanted a certificate, graduate certificate. So in 2004, when I made my choice to quit my job, support my spouse and to raise two children, I go back to school to get to become more educated, I guess you could say. Um, we settled down in Winona, Minnesota, where um, St. Mary's is located out of. I was a volunteer through my kids' school. I did little things in forestry for their classrooms. Like uh, we made paper, we uh, planted acorns, little things. You know, I still step, kept in with with uh, forestry leaf collections. And then when I applied in 2006 for the graduate school, I was accepted and I got back to school and I was like, oh, what did I sign up for? Oh my, but I'm glad I did it. When I was at Manami Travel Enterprises, I started with uh, GIS for the simple reason that we were talking about making it capable of the foresters changing the information so it was always ongoing. So there was never a lack or a backlog of what needed to be updated in our systems. So this really helped, helped out. Back in 2010, I started looking for a new job because we moved again. So that brought me to Wausau, Wisconsin. Um, I was working at just a regular retail store job. I. Uh, had a customer that I said something like, I'm sorry, I'm very slow today. And she's like, oh, no problem. What were you doing? And I said, well, I was playing Forrester out on my land. Well, two days later, I was offered a position through Marth Wood Shavings. Um, I applied for it and started in October, uh, September, which was, I'm um, like, I got my, my dream job back. I got, uh, I was, uh, became a certified plan writer. I became a cooperating forester, um, back doing sale procurement, timber marking, sale administration, buying pulp wood. And then along with it, I had student interns. So my first year there, I didn't have one, but my second year I had a student intern and he worked with me during the summertime. So we, um, I, I enjoyed that. These are some of my pictures, just from some of the work adventures. When you're, when you're working on Menominee, you get to see things like the beautiful picture on the left, you know, by the Wolf River. Um, helping landowners. This is a bucket of walnuts that I got from a coworker. So I was out on the land husking them, I guess you could say, and getting all full of that ink dye. And then we planted them. And then the picture on the right is where I did the presentation for a brunch on the farm at Shawano County. So back to the student interns. I've had student interns even at Menominee. I had high school students join me for a day or two I have had um, people that are just out of their senior year in high school, uh, not sure what they wanna do for their college career. And they came along with me and one gal actually got into uh, paper science. She decided she didn't wanna do surveys out in the woods and uh, walk through the brambles. She said that wasn't for her. Uh, the one high school student I had at Marth, on uh, she came to work in a dress and little loaf slippers. And uh, I said, well, we were going out in the woods. And 
So I had to switch my whole day around because she didn't understand what a forester did. And after that two days, she, she, she did, she understood what it was all about. And then the last couple um, interns I had were actually UW Stevens Point students, Jeremy and Ethan. Um, they really excelled and uh, they both have wonderful jobs right now. And every once in a while, they'll call me up and say, hey, can you help me with this? Or can you help me with that? So it's, it's, really, it's really rewarding to have them call back and say, hey, I have a question. So continuing education. What I really liked about continuing education is that it, it's always been there, even since Menominee Tribal Enterprises. We did uh, sessions at the Forest Service, uh, working on White Pine Symposiums, Aspen Symposium. I went to Duluth for the White Pine Symposium. Um, Hemlock, Willie J. Adult, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, insects, disease, what's, what's on the cuspus. Um, back when emerald ash borer was just a thought, you know, like, hey, it's coming this way and, and now look at where we are, you know, looking and, and checking on it and learning and keeping up with the education. And then being a consulting force with the cooperating with the DNR, we're required to do 10 credits a year minimum. Um, it's nice, their class refreshers that they have. <clears throat> and um, there's a couple classes I've actually taken through Stevens Point um, with uh, Kevin Burns, you know, trying to get that extra knowledge. Uh, there's a couple courses I took on my own. I wanted to know what Q was. Um, I did uh, ARC, uh, obviously, when I was at uh, St. Mary's, but uh, I wanted, you know, what, what was something easier, something more manageable. I have not used it much. I'm still old fashioned. Paper, pencil, air photo, sorry. I do have the um, mapping systems of Onyx Hunt. I use that a lot. As you can print my map, I can print my maps after I um, walk a lot of, um, in a lot of areas that I've been in setting up timber sales or writing management plans. And that brings me now to central Wisconsin lumber. I am still industrial forester. Um, my previous job knowledge and skill sets are very highly sought for. Um, I am still learning log scaling and log buying. It's very different from buying pulp wood. And it's, it's an ongoing process. So changes that I've seen from 1982 to present. Computers, the first computers at UW-Stevens Point were room size. Versus, I mean, that is actually the type of computers that we used at Point after the room size ones, they downgraded them a little bit. And yeah, we use floppy disk. What's a floppy disk, right? Um, aerial photos versus digital mapping. I actually have a pair of uh, lenses like that. So when you put the two photos together, the stereoscopes, stereo pair glasses, bring the two photos together and you have the acetate on top of it and you're drawing and moving it around and looking for your hills or your different um, size canopy you know, the larger canopies versus the smaller tight canopies, um, hills, rivers, streams. And now it's all GPS data recorded. Um, when I was at Menominee Tribal Enterprises, we contacted the Coast Guard because we wanted real time. We just didn't want to record it and then download it. We actually wanted real time. And that's what we have now on our phone. I can basically look on my phone as I'm GPSing and, and it's already, it's mapping, it's mapping as I go. And uh, that's, I mean, that's really, really nice to have. And we actually, I used one of these trimbles right here. 
walked around out in the woods with that. And then we get back to the office, download it. Well, what worked, what didn't work? Sometimes we had to go back. We didn't, we'd stand there, no satellite coverage. And then what, you know, like you feel like you're wasting your day away. And then I started out, we had a CB in our truck. And if we needed something, we had to call the main office and then they got a hold of whatever we needed and, and sent us, especially with the, uh, with doing the site prep, if a, a piece of equipment broke down, we didn't have a phone with us. So I'd have to call on the CB and say, hey, can you call this manufacturer? Can you see if they have this, 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 and this? And then if they did, can you write me up a, a purchase order? I'm gonna go pick it up so we can get the machine fixed. And then we went to a bag phone. Well, that didn't last very long. And before you knew it, we had handheld phones. So what's for the future? Well, some of these I've already seen. Um, two years ago, I had a logger who actually had a drone and I thought that was the coolest thing. We basically stood on the landing and he flew his drone over and he's like, well, this is what the timber looks like. He, and he was like, I'm not interested. I had already walked it, but he used his drone, had his stuff come to his phone and he's like, no, nope, I, I don't want to cut this. And that was the end of that. And we didn't have to walk again. Um, most people in forestry, we started out measuring tree heights like this. And now we have these handy dandy little lasers, something that people use for gun hunting and we can get the height of the tree. We can take it at different height, you know, get our, our saw log heights versus our total heights versus our, our merchantable pulpwood height. And then finally, which is kind of scary, but climate change where are we going, what are we doing, and how is it going to affect forestry, our forest products, and life itself. So I want to say thank you to UW Stevens Point for uh, inviting me, um, Manami Travel Enterprises, for all that they helped and grow with my career, St. Mary's, U Mary's University out of Minnesota, for the next step in learning technology. And then Martha Wood Shavings in Central Wisconsin Lumber because without having those jobs, I probably would not be here today presenting. So very thank, very thankful for all the opportunities I've had throughout my career. And it all became possible by getting accepted to UW Stevens Point. So questions, I know I'm probably already done. Thanks, Paul. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne, for your talk. And if folks are willing, if you wanna give some applause right now, you might wanna try a reaction before we jump to some questions. I'll scroll up through the- Oh, I see your little applause hands. There you, there you go. Okay, we've got a couple questions. And again, so as I'm going through these, as folks have more questions or want to ask something, please type them in the chat and hopefully we'll get to them. Uh, the first question comes from Brad with Wisconsin DNR saying, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to young women interested in forestry as a profession? Knowing what I know now. Be confident in yourself. Um, learn. From the mistakes that you may I made lots of mistakes throughout my career, but learn from them. Um, you're going to be in a man's world. I, I work right now with I have one other female forester on um, where I'm working, but everybody else is a guy. The office clerk's a guy. The guys in the mill yard are guys. So be prepared for the male attitude, I'm sorry to say this, but the male attitude. <laughs> um, I enjoy working with the guys, but you gotta have that right mentality to work in a man's field. You gotta, you, you gotta be sure of yourself. You gotta, um, I don't know how else better to say it, but that be positive, be strong-minded, Take what you know, 
and use it to the best of your ability. Thank you for that answer. Um, we, uh, as a program, we are very aware of trying to get women into the forestry field. So you as a role model is awesome. So thank you just for that. Uh, another question here is from Scott. Can you speak about any interesting Menominee cultural activities in which you were able to participate while working in their forest? Um, the biggest cultural was um, intertribal council when they help, when Menominee tribal hosted it. Um, we had powwows that we could go to. Um, I grew up in the Shano area where really, which is really close to Menominee. So I was familiar with the powwows. Um, anytime we had uh, guests that came in, we served a traditional meal. So wild rice. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the stuff that we had. Fry bread. Oh my goodness. Fry bread is so good. <laughs> um, I was offered, like when I did the summer school stuff with the um, teaching with the pre-K through high school, I also had summer classes. Um, the coolest thing that I got, and I couldn't keep, I didn't keep it, I put it in the um, office um, display case was, I was made a lacrosse, a traditional lacrosse stick. And I got to actually try using it, I wasn't any good. Thanks for sharing those. Let's see some other questions. Again, if you've got some questions, please type them in. Uh, while we're waiting for questions, I have one for you. So I was when you were talking about your the two of you while in school, I was in a, a big flashback to my undergraduate days too. So the computer and the stereoscopes brought back some memories. You you've shown now the technology that we would love to show current students as, as a forestry program. First, acquiring the technology is a bit difficult because of the cost. But as an instructor, myself and others here, we, we kind of weigh learning what you're doing and what the technology is doing versus just using the technology to get your answer. How, what suggestions would you have for, for a forestry program, say the one here at Point, how do we balance that? Teaching and having the students understand what forestry is versus what the answers the machines are giving you. Hmm you have to teach the basics and and that's what i mean when i looked at the cur the curriculum all the basics were still there um it just that they integrated technology with it and that's good i mean i can't afford buying a license of esri but the qgr the q i could probably afford but I'm in my, my late fifties. Do I want to take on that kind of financial burden right now? No, I, I, I have a son that's just graduated from point in forestry. He's got a job. He's using, using Q he's using the Onyx hunt app that I showed him, you know, so he's doing all the overlaying and something like that would take me forever to do, but these kids, have been raised on computers and it's it's like second nature to them so just by staying abreast in the in the technology but still teaching the basics so they can understand where it came from like me if i would never been taught how to use a mapping wheel to map out roads i would have been in a situation like i don't have you know, that technology that's going to work in my situation or where there's no service. I've been in areas where there's no service. You get out that, so you got to go back out there, you do use the mapping wheel. So even though technology's there, you've got to understand where it came from because if you don't have the resources to do it the easy way, you're going to have to go back to old school. Thank you for those comments. And I'm scanning the chat box here. Um, in the bio, the 
introduction I gave you, you mentioned you work with landowners. Yep. What, what, what's your most enjoyable part about working with landowners? Um, explaining stuff and then they're like, well, I don't understand. So um, basically I become a teacher in the woods with them. I hand them my basal area stick. I usually that's what I use as a basal area stick. I, I don't have a prism. And I explained to them, I'm like, why I'm gonna take out what trees. I explained to them that my job is to create quality and quantity of what's left on their landscape. Um, some don't even know the species. So we go over what species are there. Why is it important based off of this plant? This is a tree you wanna grow. Um, those are the ones that, um, say maybe not even have a management plan through the DNR. Um, there's, there's landowners that I've worked with that do and don't have management plans. I've written stewardship plans for towns and villages. Um, I have a management plan written for a church and I basically had to stand up in front of everybody and explain why we're doing it, what is the benefit of doing it, and where do we go after each harvest and what are we doing? So having people come up after the fact and, and say, oh, I can't believe how beautiful the woods look. I just, I've never seen it look so nice. You guys did an awesome job. I just, I actually got a text yesterday, pat on the back from a landowner, walked out in his woods after the snow was gone and he said, it's never looked so nice after a logging job. You guys did an awesome job. Thank you very much. And that right there speaks volumes to me because then I know I'm doing it right. And I'm monitoring the sale and, and getting things done and still making the landowner happy, still putting money in his pocket or her pocket. And that's huge. Thank you. We have a question from Jennifer S. Did you find it challenging to transition from being a mom to getting back into your career as a forester? Oh yeah. <laughs> Even though I took um, I took some classes, you know, when I was in Minnesota, I went to a couple of the classes for um, just to keep my feet, you know, wet with forestry. Um, I met with some landowners, you know, we talked about, you know, management plans, even though I wasn't practicing as a forester per se, you know, with a job title or a business card. Um, I still did stuff in forestry, but coming back in, um, going back to school really helped. It helped understand the, the GIS better. And it was like, wow, this is way different than what I was doing at Menominee for GIS. I mean, we were walking around with a trimble and then we download stuff once we got in the office and here we are looking at it on our screens. You know, we don't have to download anything. It's right there. It's, it's on our handhelds. Um, and then going back to school, getting out, the first day of work, I basically put my head on the desk and I said, am I prepared to do this again? You know, is this really what I want? And once I got into the role of things, I, I'm surprised I even gave it up because when I gave it up, I was always looking for something in forestry. I was always looking at woods. You go by on the highway, oh, that woods needs to be thinned. I tell my husband, he goes, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so it, it, it never left me, but it, you know, coming back, you know, I was in my late forties and I didn't know if anybody wanted an old lady forester. <laughs> um, from everything you said, you're doing an awesome job as a forester. Uh, question from Brad H. In your career, are there any trends, good or bad, you have seen in current forest management? Trends. Um, I don't know. There's times when you're, when you look at forest management and you think, 
you know, like, you know, being raised on the Menominee, you know, it was always uh, 90 square feet was our target. It was 70 and saw 20 and, and pull. And on the, on the Menom, um, there's areas, I mean, you're walking through it, it's, it's, it looks like parks, I mean, with regeneration in the understory. But I, I mostly worked in the, you know, coppice and, you know, conversions, you know, sites to uh, plant. So, and then when you get out in the real world, I mean, that, I mean, that's where I learned forestry. And then when you get out in the real, real world, you have people that they don't want to do it the way you were taught. I just want to make some money off my trees. And, and I re, I'm like, no, I'm sorry, but you know, we need to have a variety of age groups. We, you know, so, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything that I would say that is wrong with it. It's just how different people view different things. I had a grandfather that decided that he is going to take the overstory off of a sugar maple stand. Well, what came back was a white ash stand. So now I'm trying to get it back to a sugar maple stand. So, I mean, it, it's what we've learned and trying to go back out on, on properties that have been high graded. I mean, that's, that's the difficult, that's the challenge. Okay, thank you for that answer. Got another question from Suba G. Forestry sometimes has a bad reputation or public perception, particularly industrial forestry. What are some steps taken to ensure the practice is sustainable today? Trying to make sure that the landowners understand that if we want trees for the future, we need to do certain things. Um, it's, it's, it can be a struggle at times especially when you want a landowner that basically, um, not that I know who did it, but um, when I worked at Marth, I was going to meet a landowner and I went past this 40 acres and it was nothing there. And I, I said to the landowner, I go, what happened here? He goes, well, the, the landowner needed some money and he basically clear cut. So that's what gets us uh, gets forestry a bad name. It wasn't per se forestry. It was just a landowner wanted money or a landowner that says, well, get me the most you can get me out of my woods. That's, that's, I mean, I understand that they're in a situation, but I always say we shouldn't take everything. Let's, let's manage it. Let's do groups or we can do gaps or, or we can set up a shelter wood trying to get them to understand that, you know, forestry is more about managing for the future instead of just taking for now. Okay, thank you. I think that's the end of the questions. So at this point, I wanna thank you once again for your presentation. I do wanna thank you for being the intern mentor to the two students. I know both of them, uh, you did well. And I'll turn it back over to Scott. Yes, Suzanne, thank you very much for joining us. A uh, very interesting conversation after your presentation. I'm, your presentation was great too, but uh, really interesting questions and, and your insights, uh, very helpful from your, your, your unique perspective. Um, so thanks for joining us. I'll pass it back to Jennifer who can close us out. All right. Yep. I would just like to say thank you again to Suzanne, uh, specifically for joining us and for sharing your insight and all your experience. And I'd also like to thank everybody in the everybody who joined us today. And just a reminder that April 9th, it's a Friday at 5 p.m., is the final uh, seminar in this seminar series with our Dean Brian Sloss. So please join us then. And if you have, if you'd like to see any of the recordings of the seminar series, um, you can go to our website at www.uwsp.edu/wcw. Thank you. Thank you.